So we didn't sort of set out to find that. It was just something that it, it's sort of unavoidable in the literature. You find this every single time you read. And I, I've sort of, I gave a sample of the studies in the book. There are a lot more studies in the book. There's another thing that looks at admiration. So what are your positive or negative feelings about a company? And they rank all of the companies on the basis of how liked or hated they are. And then they examine their performance over the following year. The most hated companies outperform the most admired companies. Morningstar gives rankings to companies. This is an A company, A plus. This one's a B. This one's a D. This one's an E. The E's comprehensively outperform the A's. Every single time you look at research, and it's, it's so uh, counter to everything that you see everywhere else, where everybody's saying, find the really high quality ones. So um, I didn't go looking for it. But when you look at this sort of strategy outside of this market, you find almost the same thing. The one exception to that is Japan. For whatever reason, the magic formula over the period of the data that we examined outperformed the earnings yield alone. Japan's a, um, an outlier in a number of different strategies. Momentum hasn't worked in Japan, whereas that's worked in, in lots of other markets. Um, but even though Japan has sort of been gently falling, this is just an interesting side, uh, side comment, even though it's been gently falling since 1990, value investing strategies in Japan have worked really well. Just buying the cheapest companies on the basis of price to earnings, price to cash flow, price to book has done something like 20% a year. So the magic formula may have just captured a little bit more of that performance. But yes, there's always a risk of data mining in this sort of, in this sort of stuff. I think that the acquirer's multiple is the way that value investors think about investing. So you're, if you think about the way that you're instructed in security analysis or the intelligent investor or any of Buffett's letters, he says, think about buying the company in its, think about buying the entire business. You're not buying a share of it, you're buying the whole thing. And that's exactly what the acquirer's multiple does. It says, this is what you pay for the market capitalization. But don't forget that you've got preferred stock debt, minority interests, off balance sheet liabilities, underfunded pensions, other things that you have to fund. But you do get the benefit of the cash that's sitting in the bank or the net cash. And then you have this discretion to spend the operating earnings as they're coming in on capex or paying down debt or various other things. So it's sort of, it's looking at the same thing that big acquirers look at. And you often, fi I often find that I'm in positions that somebody else has been buying right behind me. It's a Carl Icahn or another activist or a private equity firm, and something happens in them. Because when they get very cheap, this sort of, um, there's a little bit of instability. It's not a situation that should persist like that. There's, they're sort of inviting external managers to come in and try to rectify the situation. So data mining is always a problem. But I think there are a variety of reasons why this strategy should work quite well. And it does work quite well in different time periods and in different markets.